Hello everyone and welcome back to Fallout 4. I am Automa Titan and we are out of the vault. The sun is shining and the world is... Hmm. The world is fucked. The nuclear apocalypse has happened but we survived. Admittedly, we were tricked into cryogenic stasis but alas, we are... Well... It did enable us to survive, which is a glorious thing. Now, unfortunately, our husband, he was killed and our son was kidnapped. So, it's not all good. But, we are going to find Sean. We are going to find our son. And, in relation to the vault now, when we got out, I don't know how much time had passed since we witnessed Nate being killed and Sean being taken away, but one thing that I am concerned about, or at least intrigues me, is who, le who let us out the vault? The vault was sealed, and no one, as far as I'm aware, apart from those who got in, had the ability to get in. So, that begs the question, how did we get out? And I'm hoping that as we progress through the game, we are going to find out who let us out, otherwise I am going to be a little bit disappointed. But I imagine we will find out. Either way, we have returned home into the place we called home Sanctuary before the bombs fell. And i got to say, it's not been kind to what... It's not been kind to the neighbourhood. Admittedly... Our house is still standing, and Codsworth? Codsworth, you're alive! You do neither of those things, Codsworth. You're a machine. But it's good to see you, Codsworth. Have you seen the... So, we went into the vault, you saw, we were tricked into cryogenic stasis, I woke up, no idea how much time has passed, I imagine you're going to tell me in a moment, um, and I witnessed someone open Nate's cryogenic chamber, kill him, and kidnap Sean. Codsworth. He's dead. He can't be dead. He can't be. I have a dream. This isn't a dream, Natasha. Okay. What do you have in mind, Codsworth? The people who offed Nate, they kind of kidnapped Sean. I don't know why, I don't know where they've took him, but I'm going to retrieve him. Codsworth, you're insane. How long was I in the vault? Sean's been kidnapped. I'm gonna find him. I'm gonna get my baby back. It's worse than I thought. Mm. You're suffering from hunger-induced paranoia. Not eating for 
Two hundred years. You've been alone for two hundred years. Okay, you probably got a bit peculiar. Two hundred years? What? Are you sure? A bit over two hundred and ten, actually, Bob. It was the equivalent of the Earth's rotation and some minor dings to the old chronometer. That means you're uh, two centuries late for dinner. <laughs> That's not the biggest concern here, Codsworth. I'm fine, but um, are you okay? I mean, no contact for 200 years? Even though you're a robot, I imagine that that is kind of detrimental. Codsworth, you're acting a little weird. What's wrong? I... I... Bob, this is just horrible. Two centuries that no one to talk to, no one to I spent the first ten years trying to keep the floor wet. Nothing can now move me or fall out of the final wood. It'll be okay, Codsworth. And don't get me started about the futility of dusting a collapsed car. <laughs> and the car, the car, how do you call it rock? You don't. You don't, Codsworth. What do you know, Codsworth? I'm afraid I don't know anything, Bob. The bomb came and took all of you left in such a hurry. And I thought for certain you and your family were, were dead. I'm alive. I, I did find this hollow thing. I believe Sir was going to present it to you as a, as a surprise. But then, well, everything happened. Yeah. Considering I've just told you that Nate is dead and Sean has been kidnapped, you don't seem to have taken much notice of what I've said, good sir. There's nothing left here. It's all gone. Well, if you wish to mention a past unknown, I won't stop you. I shall guard the neighbourhood for your absence. Thank you, Codsworth. It will be okay. I will find Sean. And I will rebuild Sanctuary. So, wait, we still have a quest marker for Codsworth? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll do a search. I do like Codsworth. He seems like a fun character. And he does remind me somewhat of Crichton from Red Dwarf, or at least when we first obtained Crichton. So as we take him with us, if we can... Codsworth? So that's how you kept burning the carpets. Okay. Lead the way, Codsworth. I might bring you with me if you're able to be a companion. I mean, you know Mr. Gutze, but you do have a flamethrower, and considering that the flies are kind of huge, I imagine a flamethrower would be somewhat useful. God's worth, I expected protection. God's worth, you, God's worth, you are useless. God's worth, I was expecting you to kill off all of those bloat flies, but it's okay. It's okay. I'm going to have to get used to doing the fighting. Yes, my god's worth. They are. I'm sorry. Sean's out there, Codsworth. I need to find him. What about Codsworth, Bob? He's still there. And last I checked, they only tumbled me with sticks a few 
That's still a problem. That is still a problem, Codsworth. Early, but yeah. Okay, cheers, Codsworth. Right, before we make our way to Concord, I have some scavenging to do. Always useful to do the scavenging thing, where scavenging thing even when it comes to this game. As I think I've already mentioned it, but there is crafting in the game, and I am looking forward to upgrading our 10mm pistol which is one of my favourite weapons in the Fallout franchise purely because it is one of the more reliable weapons in the game and the ammunition for it is more or less always frequent so yeah it is a somewhat reliable weapon and from the little yeah, from the little of the game that I have already played we can utilise one of the crafting benches to more or less scrap everything that no longer functions. So you see these houses which are completely collapsed. Let's see if I can find one. I'm going to say this one as an example. We can use that red bench over there to completely rid us of that house which is a fantastic thing because then we can rebuild on top of this uh, foundation and create our very own little base of operations which we are going to be doing at least once at some point in the future. I'm not really going to be starting that today although I may do next time as as I've already said I want to do some scavenging so that I can upgrade my 10mm as early as possible. Now the way that I am planning on upgrading my 10 my 10 millimeter is going to be so that when we are a little bit higher level we are going to be more of a sneaky kind of character so I'm going to want a silencer on the gun we only have the one lock pit look we only have the one bobby pin so we do need to be a little bit careful with it There we go. That is quite a substantial amount of loot. I, I like that. Nothing in the dresser, nothing in the other dresser. I doubt there's anything in the bathroom, although there could be a med kit. No, there is not. That's one thing that I do like about this game so far. And I am going to be praising a lot of the things I like in the opening episodes. So, yeah. One of the things I do, one of the things I do like, is that there are a rather substantial amount of med kits in the area, which means there is a solid supply of med kits, not med kits, a solid supply of stim packs, which is always fantastic and always a good thing to have, as you can't really have too many stim packs. You can use too many stim packs and perhaps even overuse the stim packs but so long as you have a steady supply you should be good to go and I very nearly missed out on 28 bullets right I think that that is everything of value on on this side of Sanctuary hello Codsworth how did this survive the nuclear apocalypse? There are houses out there that have collapsed, but this magazine, Grognak the Barbarian, has survived the nuclear apocalypse. I'm taking you. Oh, critical hits with unarmed and melee attacks permanently do plus 5% damage. Nice. We are going to be finding a lot of those, I imagine. This is where I did character customization and where we started the playthrough. I'm impressed at the magazine though being able to survive all of this carnage considering that if you just look around 
there is absolute chaos everywhere we look. So, yeah, the sheer fact that that magazine survived is impressive. This was once my car. Well, Nate's car, but still. It was once my car. Right, let's see what I can craft. Just going to store all of the junk in there, and let's take a look at what we have access to. Let's go with a long barrel, just because that is the standard look of the 10mm that I do enjoy having. I am a little bit low on adhesive, so I cannot utilise any more of the mods, unfortunately. Can I get any grips? No. No magazine, no sights, and no muzzles. I might be able to find a little bit more adhesive if I just have a quick look around. So we're going to do that. That is one more adhesive. We just need one more. One more adhesive. Come on, game. Give me one more adhesive. Actually, can I scrap the pipe pistol? Can I scrap the pipe pistol, game? Tell me I can. I can. What do I get into that? Steel. Only steel. Only steel. And only steel, unfortunate. But it is how it is. Is there anything else in this building which could be used as adhesives? Used oil, which is probably just going to be oil. I was really hoping to get two upgrades to the... I was really hoping to get two upgrades on the 10mm, but it's okay if we cannot. We will be upgrading the 10mm throughout the game as we progress. And just before we end off today's episode, I am going to have a little bit of fun using the scrapping feature by tearing down this old house. I have no idea who used to live here, but this is going to be where we are going to be creating our very first base of operations once we have all of the required scrap. And with that everyone, I hope you have enjoyed today's episode of Fallout 4. I am Automatitan, and I will see you next time.